The demo scene has a few examples of how to utilize the runtime color sampler. So you can see we have the portrait here being modified, the text being modified, and the material on this rotating rectangle also being modified. The upper left here shows what the render texture is that the camera is sampling, and this is what we use to get the average color at any given position. The runtime color sampler is moving around the scene automatically. It's attached to our player object. Generally speaking, you'd probably want the sampler to be attached to your player, but of course you can put it anywhere and sample the color at that point. The scene is made up of a dark hallway with colorful lighting and an outside area lit by directional light. We also have this pink light on the outside as well. If we select the runtime color sampler in the hierarchy, the inspector will show us a whole lot of information. The runtime color settings are each a scriptable object and they determine how the average color is modified before being passed to the runtime color listeners which are attached to these objects in the scene. The average color is shown at runtime at the top and the outputs for each of the settings is shown here on the right. We can adjust these at runtime and we'll see the changes live. Since these are scriptable objects, they will not reset when we exit play mode. You can use the check mark on the left to disable the settings entirely, in which case the any listener using those settings will stop being updated. And the relative check mark determines whether the min and max clamping will clamp one of the RGB values to the minimum or maximum value while keeping the other two values relative to that. When it's on, the color will generally be saturated at the lowest and highest values. And when it's off, it will clamp with all values to be the highest or all values being the lowest, so you'll get more gray at the high and the low. The saturation value determines how saturated the image is, one being fully saturated and zero being completely grayscale. You can change the value here and you'll see the output change, but you'll also see the output change on the objects in the scene which are listening with that color settings. When you are desaturating the RGB values, the human eye sees colors a little bit differently than R, G, and B all being equal. So you can modify these values if you'd like to get a look that looks better for your project. Blue in particular, I find is very dark when converted to grayscale. Now let's check out each of these objects. In our canvas, we have the demo text. It's a TextMesh Pro object and we have the runtime color listener TextMesh Pro's text script on here. Every listener inherits from the runtime color listener parent class and has very similar options, but they're each set up for their specific purpose. In this case, we've assigned the runtime color settings to the demo text object. Transition time is set to one, and we aren't currently overriding the color value. We can do this just by raising up the blend amount. This is something you can test in the inspector or you can script this at runtime. You can set whatever color you'd like and you can also blend these various blend modes to get different results. Note that we are blending only the color. We do not, it does not blend the entire image. It only blends the color that's provided by the settings object and this color that you set here. The image has a runtime color listener image class on it, and we have the demo portrait settings selected. This will work for an image or a raw image. The same component will work on either one, and it will automatically search and try to hook up the image or raw image from this object. If we set the transition time to be zero, you'll notice that the colors will transition quite quickly and in some cases they will almost look like it's being turned on and off as the sample color changes rapidly, especially when moving between shadow and light areas. That's why the transition time is default to one second, but you can play with that and get a look that works for your project. The image also has an override on hover script attached to it, which codes the blending amount when we hover our mouse over the image. We can see that the blend value goes up to the full amount when we hover over and back down to zero when we exit. This is a great way to see how the different blending modes will affect the image based on the average color combined with the blend color. And finally, the demo cube has a runtime color listener material on it, which is just listening to the demo cube settings. Just like the others, you are able to custom code an override amount and customize that color to override whatever the average color is if you want to highlight an object or do something else of that nature. 
If you check out the runtime color sampler object itself, the object has two children. One is a sample sphere, which is just a very, very small primitive sphere in the middle of the scene with the layer set to color sampler. And the front camera has a target of the sample sphere and this sampler camera position script as well. Now I've paused play mode so we can see where this is positioned. By default, the camera is actually looking straight down onto the sampler sphere. I find that's going to give the most pleasing average color, but you can test this out for your own project to see what works best for you. We can enable the debug keys here, and then when we hit these keys at runtime, it'll change the rotation of the camera so we can kind of test out which direction works best for our project. So here we're following the camera in the scene, and we can see the result of the average color up here in the game view. Now we're looking directly at the sphere, but the player isn't rotating, so is isn't necessarily the best first person view or looking at the player view, but you can get an idea of how the color has now changed on this. Now when we're outside and when we go through these colors, we're getting much less of the color because we're facing the camera and getting a lot more from below, which is often going to be in shadow or only gain a bounce light from the floor. So here we are back at the top, and I believe you'll find that this is the angle at which works best for your game, but definitely check it out and try it out for yourself. So that's the demo scene. If you have any questions, let me know. Come to the Discord, and I hope to see you real, real soon.